Hey guys, Dennis here with VOG Games. I'm joined by Joshua Veyers, all the way in South Africa. <laughs> yes, and today we're going to talk about the Game Awards nominations, which you know is going to be taking place, I believe, on December 5th. Uh, Jeff Keighley just did a live stream announcement, uh, I think, I believe, yesterday. We're going to talk about. We're not going to go through every single category, but we'll talk about the ones that we kind of have more uh, experience with. Um, but yeah, this year, um, before we get started, this year, not that last year was a bad year for gaming, but I felt like there wasn't as many AAA titles last year, um, and it was more of like like uh, a lot of good indie games last year. This year, the, the AAA titles have kind of come back, as, as you'll see uh, in, in the nominations. Uh, what do you think overall of kind of the games that were nominated and kind of the whole feel for, for this year? Well, first of all, uh, the live stream was short and to the point, which I really appreciate. So thank you, Jeff Keighley, for keeping it short and to the point. Um, yeah, look, I'm, I'm pretty happy with the nominations. A couple of them stood out for me, and I was kind of like wondering why they got nominated or why they were put in the category that they were put in. But um, I don't know. Do you know if the nominations were voted on by the public or did the... I know the winners are voted on by the public. Like, you can vote right mm -hmm. now in the Discord channel or on the website. But I don't know if the nominations were voted on because I think I think the nominations are weird. internal. I think it's internal because yeah, it must be. I feel because I think figure like they want to make something or nominate something that's worthy, and then if the fans choose whatever, at least it to them it's worthy of being at least nominated. So you don't get any outliers where you're like, you know, I'm gonna you know pick like troll the game awards and make some crappy oh, game. Fair enough, yeah. You know, so. I think that's probably how it works. So let, let's start oh, off with... Hold on, hold on. Go ahead. Before what we jump into this, I, just, I did just want to say, because I know we're big on VR on this channel, I'm really enjoying Among Us VR. Oh, just are throwing you? that out there. I, I haven't started yeah, I, yet. I will... Um, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll talk about that on the on the podcast more in depth, but yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, this is not going to be a full podcast. We'll do that probably later this week. But yeah. uh, just want to talk about the Game Awards nominations since this is probably going to be... I'd say like half an hour at least just on mm -hmm. this subject uh, matter. So let's start off with the big one. Game of the yeah. year. You know, this is the, the one, you know, that everyone wants to win. Uh, last year was uh, It Takes Two, right, Juan? Correct, I yeah. believe. Yeah, yeah. Um, Which was a surprise to me, but also not a surprise because it was a fantastic game. But it's interesting that a co-op game won Game of the Year. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? But man, it is a really fun game. It's a great co-op game. Yeah, like I said, last year was a very good year for indies. Uh, it wasn't a big AAA uh, game year. This year, a uh, different story, despite even some of the delays like Hogwarts and Starfield not coming out this year. But let's, let's talk about the nominees. Uh, so Game of the Year, A Plague Tale Requiem, Elden Ring, God of War Ragnarok, Horizon Forbidden West, Stray, and Xenoblade Chronicles 3. So I'm familiar with all these games except for Xenoblade Chronicles 3. Stray was a little surprised. The top four weren't. I was yeah. maybe not surprised, but I was delighted to see a Plague Tale Requiem get the recognition mm -hmm. just because it's like one of those games that's like, I don't know, it's like almost triple A title. You know what I mean? It's like almost in that category plus you know, the first game was like well received, but it was kind of more like a cult favorite. And th this yeah. one, it has kind of gotten a lot more acclaim. It's it's a lot bigger. I mean, it's Anyways. definitely got yeah, definitely got the triple A feel for mm -hmm. sure. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I mean, God, that's a stacked category, and I haven't played Horizon. Yeah, Stray, Stray, yeah. like like you said as well. Stray, it's, it's interesting. Look, I know a lot of people loved Stray, but it's mm -hmm. a very short game. Like, I would have expected it to be in a different category, like maybe games of impact, you know what I mean? Because mm -hmm. that did, like, even like non gamers loved Stray. But I would, I, I don't think it's, I don't think it's game of the year material, man. Uh, Xenoblade Chronicles 3, I haven't had the chance to play that. I did play the first one mm -hmm. uh, years ago when it came, technically, I think it came out on the Wii and they re released it onto the Switch. Um, haven't had the chance to play number three yet. But also, like, not something I would consider game of the year, at least. Unless it's phenomenal compared to the mm -hmm. first two games. Mm -hmm. I don't really consider that game of the year material either. We really are looking at the top four here. Like the top, top four, four, the four that we mentioned. And yeah. I feel like it's a two horse race. I think it's between mm -hmm. Elden Ring and God of War Ragnarok. As much as I love a Plague Tale Requiem, 
and I'm sure Horizon Forbidden West is, is, is great as well, but in the eyes of the public and ab- about what people, you know, the buzz about these games, it's Elden Ring versus God of War Ragnarok. And we had talked about that at the beginning of the year, like when Elden Ring had come out and you and me were obsessed with it. We were like, okay, can anything beat this? And we're like, the only thing is probably God of War Ragnarok, you know? Yeah. So the, the benefit, though, of God of War Ragnarok is... It came out recently, so it's got that recent buzz, right? So recency mm. bias that sometimes uh, happens in, in all manners of, of judging where people are more excited about it because it's... The, I mean, I put so many hours into Elden Ring, but I haven't touched it in months, right? So, like, I don't have that same buzz that I had when I was playing it, even though yeah. who knows if it would match what I'm playing with, with God of War Ragnarok. So, I don't I'd know. What the do you... community, the community is very diehard for Elden Ring, though, for sure. Mm-hmm. Like, the community, like it's a lot more diehard than the God of War. I could get flamed for saying this. Like, the God of War community is huge but they're i don't think that they're as ready to represent the game as the elden ring community like the elden ring community is really going to represent it I, I will say though right off the bat like plague tale requiem i also played a bit of it it's a fantastic mm-hmm. game it really is between elden ring and god of war ragnarok mainly because this is user voted right these are yes uh consumer voted this is if it was based upon like uh review like uh uh, proper uh, journalistic reviewers and stuff, I think it'd be a bit different because... Well, like I think it'd be between Horizon Forbidden West, God of War Ragnarok, and Elden Ring because God of War Ragnarok, at least from what I've been able to tell, as as, as phenomenal as it is, like, not... Like, it's... it's Like, you said it yourself, not much has really changed from the previous game. Maybe yeah. a few new powers. You don't want it to change much, but also you want to see some change. Like, Horizon Forbidden West, still the same game mechanics, but, like, a whole new set of weapons. Like, they've mm-hmm. innovated the game a lot compared to the, the previous game. So there's a lot, like, it's very different in terms of gameplay. Well, you know what I mean? Like, it's still the same mechanics, but new mechanics. Or di- mm-hmm. it's, it's it's portrayed in a different way, you know what I mean? You've got airy, you can, you've got mounts in the, that you can fly with, you have a glider, things like that. So they changed that up a lot. Um, in my heart, I hope Elden Ring wins, because I do think that Elden Ring had a much bigger impact on mm-hmm. the gaming world. And then maybe that'll be in games for impact as well. Or game like Elden Ring, if it doesn't win, if it doesn't win Game of the Year, it's definitely going to win Game Direction. You know what I mean? Yeah. So this is my take. So I haven't finished Ragnarok and I f- haven't finished Requiem yet. So I'm not going to say Elden Ring is better than those two because I haven't finished them. Right. I, well, I will say this: I think Elden Ring's going to win, and I just realized why is because remember. Ragnarok is only on two consoles, the PS4 Correct. and the PS5. Um, Elden Ring is on the PS... Multi-platform. I think it's a PS4, PS5, Xbox Series X, Xbox Series S, I think Xbox One, PC. So it's just a wider range of people can play, uh, 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 play the game. It's available to everyone. So that's kind of where I'm thinking. I'm thinking Elden Ring is going to win uh game of the year that's my prediction i think it's gonna win a few categories yes but we'll get into that yeah okay here we go so the next one which is kind of related to game of the year is much like the oscars where you have the best picture and the one like kind of just below that is uh director um best game direction so we have uh mainly the same games uh elden ring god of war ragnarok horizon forbidden west immortality and stray so the the two that are gone from there are plague tale requiem and xenoblade chronicles 3 and immortality so immortality is a game i've talked about before on the podcast that a lot of people haven't played it's it's a very um i can see why it got nominated because it's all about kind of the acting and the direction less about the gameplay because there's not much gameplay to it um if people don't know immortality is from sam barlow who had done uh, her story and I forgot the other one it was like telling lies was the other one and yeah. all her of them story it, was very popular though yeah and all of them involve just videos it's like a lot of videos and you have to kind of like research and and like like a mystery and you kind of solve these puzzles but all you're doing is really watching videos and then and trying to like find more videos and tr- you're piecing together a story together and the direction is very important because of all the videos in there. So I see why that's why that's in there. I don't think it's going to win. 
I, I, I still think it's going to be a two horse race between Elden Ring, God of War, Ragnarok, where I could see a split where I think Elden Ring is winning, winning game of the year. I could see God of War, Ragnarok winning game direction. What do you think? I think uh, Elden Ring will win game direction okay. as well. I think it's it's possible for it to take both game of the year and game direction just because of how different it was. Like God of War Ragnarok, it didn't change the direction much mm -hmm. from True. God of War, you know? It's which like I said, in in terms of at least for me, like what I what I want from God of War is I want a continuation. I would have liked to see more weapons and stuff mm -hmm. like that added, like uh that which is how they did the first trilogy. Um but the direction's pretty much the same direction, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So, for at least for me, but but once again, these are fan, you know, these are user mm -hmm. uh, um, voted stuff. Interestingly enough, I'd say in terms of game direction, I don't think Stray's going to get a lot of votes, but Stray had a really good game direction. Mm -hmm. It was very fresh. It was very new, mm -hmm. the way that it had that game direction. Uh, Immortality, I forgot that even existed until mm -hmm. you explained what it was, and I was like, oh right, that game. Mm -hmm. But I don't think it's going to get much views as as good as it is. I'm gl um, I'm glad it got nominated though. It got nominated in a few yeah. different categories. I'm glad it got recognition. Yeah, uh, Horizon Forbidden West, story wise, it didn't change much of the. There was much of a game direction change, but in terms of gameplay, they added a lot of new things and a lot of different things, a lot more different monsters and stuff. Um, but once again, I do think it's going to be between Ragnarok and Elden Ring here, based on the. Uh, the votes and once again just because you mentioned it just now Elden Ring being a multi-platform yes. game I think Elden Ring might very well win that game as well dude I I can see Elden Ring doing a clean sweep just because mm -hmm. way more people have played it you know what I mean true what I will say is it's interesting that there's a lot of Sony games here a lot of Sony exclusives well, you know not not any Xbox exclusives well Xbox didn't uh, come you, out with anything you know? They didn't exactly. There was yeah. no there was no triple triple A first party studios for, mm. for Microsoft, so it makes but sense. Game Pass uh, was doing well for them, so yeah. Yeah, yeah. N game Pass will do much better next year for them, so it'll be interesting mm. to see the Game Awards next year I, and where I, I, Microsoft yeah, goes. Another topic, but a lot of people have canceled their PS Plus subscription just because the the tiers confused them. Yeah. It was a. Uh, so a lot of people uh, just got rid of it for that sake. Yeah, I think Elden Ring's going to win here as well. You know what? There's, I, I there's probably think so as well because when I'm thinking of the game direction, it's more than um, just the story because there's also the yeah. gameplay involved. But the next one I do think is where God of War Ragnarok has a chance, yes. and that's best narrative, which is A Plague Tale Requiem, Elden Ring, God of War Ragnarok, Horizon Forbidden West, and Immortality. And the, the reason I say this is because Elden Ring... While it has a great <laughs> lore, it doesn't have a very detailed narrative. I like, still have no idea what the hell's going on in that game, and I put in like I put in like almost two hundred hours, Dennis. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love that game, but I have no idea what the hell's happening. You know, so I, mean? I don't see in how that could win. It has a great backstory, right? A lore, yeah. but it the actual narrative itself is actually not very. Not very good. Like it's I, no, I wouldn't like, even say not good. It's just very shallow because they're not really. It's not focused yeah. on that, you know. Very hidden as well. You know what I mean? Yeah. So yeah. I, like I if, if you will, even a Plague Tale Requiem has a, a better narrative than Correct. than Elden yeah. Ring. So, and I'm sure Horizon Forbidden West does too. I just haven't played it yet. Um, yeah. And Immortality. I think God of War well. Ragnarok's gonna win. Your, yeah, you're I think so. You're right. You're absolutely right with this one. Yeah, God of War, I, th I think, uh, yeah, takes that one. So the next one is Best Art Direction, Elden Ring, God of War, Ragnarok, Horizon Forbidden West, Scorn is in there, and Stray. Yeah. So you, now you're you're taking out a, a Plague Tale from from this kind of big list of, of big top contenders, and you sit put in Scorn, which obviously has that H.R. Geiger, and then I forgot the Polish artist mm. influence in there. So it has a really cool art direction. For me, it's it's Elden Ring. Elden Ring is the funny yeah. thing about Elden Ring is I, I kept saying this is like the models and the animations were not actually top notch um, compared yeah. to like other games, but the art direction in it is fantastic. And every location you go to, every weapon, every armor just has this beautiful, gorgeous look to everything. So for me, this yeah. is like Elden Ring, you know. The, yeah, it, it's I, my choice. I would say, uh, first of all, like Horizon Forbidden West, I would I would say it's not that it has a very good art direction. It's very pretty. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like it's very like polished, very pretty, a lot of mm -hmm. bright colors, 
but uh, not much like well, like the 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 the. the the robotic creatures you fight were definitely like difficult to design and things like that. I'd imagine um, God of War Ragnarok, from what I've seen as well, it very similar art direction to God of War, you know. Mm -hmm. um, but I think a lot of people are going to vote for God of War Ragnarok. I think I agree with you. Elden Ring had the most beautiful art direction, and it was like, like I said, you weren't dealing with like the highest graphics. Like the game wasn't like super big graphics, but the idea behind it all, like like the 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 erd tree like mm -hmm. every like that first moment the very first moment you have into the open world was beautiful it was stunning like the the atmosphere in the game yes. is the phenomenal bosses. the bosses the yeah. design of the, all the true, bosses true, yeah, yeah. And, and this the aesthetic man here's the thing i know scorn's not going to get voted for but i did love the art direction of scorn mm -hmm. I did yeah. love it. I just know I, a lot of people hated the game, but I I kind of enjoyed it, you know? I only played a little of it. I didn't get really into it. The only thing with Scorn when you talk about the art direction is that it's very, it's the same. You know? It's, it's very alien, similar. Man. Where yeah. Elden Ring, there's beautiful, much, like, right. different, yeah. Elden Ring goes into various different types of fantastical uh, environments. To me, this is mm. Elden Ring's hands down. Um, let's go to best score music. Now this one's interesting because um, here here we go. We got uh, Olivier Derivery, if I'm pronouncing that correctly, A Plague Tale Requiem, uh, Sakasa Sato in Elden Ring, Bear McCreary, God of War Ragnarok, Two Feathers uh, for Metal Hellsinger, and Yasunori Mitsudo. So I don't know where, I don't know why my list only has his name. It doesn't say like what uh, he's Zeno worked on. Chronicles 3. Okay, so I don't know why I got cut off. But anyways, I haven't played Metal Hellsinger or uh, Xenoblades. Oh, I have. But these well, three... I haven't, I haven't played okay. Xenoblade. But these three have excellent scores. Uh, God of War Ragnarok, Elden Ring, A Plague Tale Requiem. Oh man, that's a tough one. This one's like to me like such a a toss-up. Um, I'm Look, I'm biased. I know mine's not going to win. I didn't like the game Metal Health Singer, but mm -hmm. man, as a metalhead, that, that soundtrack clapped. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, the game was basically designed like it was a half and half. It was designed mm -hmm. with music in mind, and it was designed with like a lot of metal artists. That's kind of how they marketed the game as well. I like that's just because I'm biased towards the genre. So, really, I think it's between Ragnarok and Elden Ring again. Elden Ring was very fantastical with its score music. I haven't uh, gotten to play God of War Ragnarok yet, but if I'm basing it off of the previous God of War game, which had mm. an amazing score and music, mm. which was like um, uh, like very dark, but then also like, um, I'm not uplifting, I forget. Um, my vocabulary is a bit short today, but I really enjoyed uh, God of War's uh, soundtrack. Uh, so I haven't played the new one, so I don't, um, it can only be just as good. I'm sure that's the same guy. Um, but it's it's dude, it's I really couldn't tell you who's gonna win here. I think it's between Elden Ring and God of War, just because those are the most played games, you know. A Plague Tale Requiem also has great stuff, but a smaller fan base, smaller fan base, you know. Yeah, I mean that that Elden Ring theme really hits hard. Mm. Like that, it, it like, does. Yeah, like in the intro oh, screen. Yeah, it does. Um, yeah, dude, that's true, man. That's don't. true. Mm, yeah, like it's it really like you're like oh I'm on an epic adventure now. Oh yeah. Um, all right, let's go. Epic, epic music, yeah. Let's go to best performance. Uh, this is actually mm. also a very stacked category. So we have Ashley Birch for Horizon Forbidden West. We have Charlotte uh, McBurney for A Plague Tale Requiem. Christopher Judge for God War Ragnarok. Manan Gage for Immortality. Sunny Suljic for God of War Ragnarok. So I played all of these except for Horizon Forbidden West, and these are mm. all excellent performances. Um, I would guess that, I mean, the most popular one is probably going to be Christopher Judge. Uh, just, I was going to say, even just meme, just because of like memes or, yeah. you know what I mean? Like a lot of people are just going to vote for him because it's, because it's God of War. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, like hell, people who haven't even played the game will probably vote for him. You know what I mean? Yeah. I will say though, Charlotte had an amazing performance. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I, haven't, I haven't played Horizon Forbidden West yet, but I am a huge Ashley Birch fan. Mm -hmm. And I mean huge, like I, I love Ashley Birch. Mm -hmm. um, but in terms of like, like you're looking, I, like, uh, like you're looking at like the mocap for Charlotte, you know what I mean? Like that's, like that, it was really good acting, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? 
Yeah, like, I, all, all I, around. Uh, I want to give a shout out to Manan Gage, if that's how you pronounce yeah. her name. I can't, but she did fantastic because Immortality basically the whole game like relies on her performance. Like if mm. she does not pull it off, uh, because she has to play herself in three different stages of her life, um, and you know there's a lot of mystery in in in, in twists and turns with her character because she's also playing herself as an actress but she's also playing the characters in the movies that she's acting in as well you know so um, i don't think she'll win just purely on numbers wise but i i I think she deserves a lot of recognition yeah Um, out of what i've experienced i i enjoyed charlotte's performance most Mm -hmm. but i do think christopher judge is going to win just because he's because he's god of war you know how far are you in plague tale requiem um not not too far because uh, I've been AFK for a while actually. Mm-hmm. Like the past, I'd say two three. Well, I mean I had COVID about three weeks ago as well. I've been man down. Like I've been away. I've been away from my PC for the past three weeks. I've been mm-hmm. playing a lot of Switch games because mm-hmm. I have I've, like I've been driving around a lot, traveling a lot. So I have my Switch. Time to get a Steam Deck. <laughs> I'm, I, I'm I'm not gonna lie. I was I was I might leave it for the podcast, but I was gonna yeah. say, dude, I've been playing. Uh, I, I mean, I, I doubt it'll get out there, so I doubt we'll get demonetized for it. But I've well, I won't say it. I've been playing the the Nintendo Switch emulator to mm-hmm. to like basically try out games before I spend a because they're so expensive. Before I go and throw down the money for it, I try it out first, yeah. and it's the one that people have been said is the Steam Deck. You use that emulator, and it's basically yeah. a Switch. I'm not gonna lie, it runs really good on PC. Some of the games run better on it, better on PC than they do on the Switch. Um, yeah. But yeah. If I yeah, if I was a mobile gamer, I would definitely would get a Steam Deck. But uh, mm-hmm. I I have hardly enough time to just play on my PC or my consoles uh, as it is. All right, let's go on to best ongoing game. I think this is something you will have mm. more experience with, but I'll read them off: Apex Legends, Destiny Two, Final Fantasy fourteen Online, Fortnite, Genshin Impact. So, what are your thoughts? All right, well, right off the bat, I'd say Destiny Two is out of is not even cons- considerable in my opinion. Apex Legends, they did add arena mode. I don't know if that was last year or this year because I haven't played it in so long. Mm-hmm. But I do know that the uh, the fan base for that has been growing. Uh, Fortnite added no build mode, which got me back to play the game because I can't build freaking like towers like in an, in a second. You know what I mean? I get destroyed by kids. But um. So I've been playing a lot of Fortnite. Like, Fortnite's always one of those things where, like, that's the real metaverse, man. Mm-hmm. I don't know any other game where you can have DC and Marvel characters in the same gay sh- game shooting each other. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And a bunch of anime ca- Like, that's... I will say that. Uh, Fortnite won me over again this year. Um, Final Fantasy XIV is a game that I love. It's near and dear to my heart. I don't play it all year round because it's an MMO, and MMOs are a huge time sink. Mm-hmm. So I'll usually, like, if I got a slow month, I'll buy... I'll because you got a it's a subscription service so ah. I'll pay for a month and then I'll play it. Um, do love that. We'll say though, the 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 previous expansion came out December seventh, which is technically within the year of the Game Awards to be accepted because Game of uh, the Game Awards games that came out in December of last year would be uh, in the pool to be nominated for this year. So, but it has been a that's technically a while ago. Um, I think it's actually between Genshin Impact and Final Fantasy XIV. I don't play a lot of Genshin Impact, but we're talking about the fan base here. It's fan votes. Genshin it's Impact a has a fan. huge fan yeah. base, dude. Because it's also mobile. And it's it, there's a lot of people who play it on mobile. It's on every console. It's on PC. Mm-hmm. Um, Final Fantasy XIV is just uh, PC and uh, console. You know what I mean? It's not... All, it's not the mo- like mobile players, as much as I don't like mobile gaming, it's a huge pool of people. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So I think it's between Genshin Impact and Final Fantasy XIV. Um, I really enjoyed Fortnite this year, though, because I think it's, it was nice for them to add the no-build mode. Cool. But yeah, so it's, it's a toss-up between those two. I couldn't tell you. I hope Final Fantasy XIV wins, just because out of the two, if I had to choose one, I would choose Final Fantasy XIV. Um, but if they don't win for that, it'll win for commu- uh, community support. Cool. Um, all right, let's move on to best indie game. Uh, we have Cult of the Lamb, Neon White, Sifu, Stray, and Tunic. So this is a very good year for for indie games. Yeah. I've I heard of all. all of, I think I've heard all of these except for Neon White. Um, Sifu Neon is one White that is interesting. Yeah, you know, Sifu's getting a lot of love. Uh, this uh, Game Awards nominations. Um, mm. Which one would you out of these would you pick? 
I don't think it'll win, but I, out of all of these, the one I enjoyed the most mm -hmm. is uh, Call to the Lamb. I en I really enjoy that. It's a lot like um, well, it's got like the the roguelite elements, and it's a lot like uh, Binding of Isaac um, and Dreamscaper. It's a, it's a lot like a lot of roguelite games. What I like is that you have your home base, and that's a little bit like Animal Crossing. So it's like Animal Crossing meets Binding of Isaac. So I really enjoyed that. Uh, Neon White. I believe was also um if it is the game that i'm thinking of that i played yeah it's 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 quite fast-paced and fun mm. it's um i don't know how to explain it but it was very different i haven't experienced a game like that also also roguelike also roguelike mm. but way more fast-paced i haven't I haven't really experienced a game like that i can't think of any other games i mean it's funny the only other game i think that's like that is kingdom hearts chain of memories which was um i think originally it was like no um was it a Game Boy game, I think? Mm -hmm. Then eventually it became a PlayStation game. It, it, it's weird, but like, it's because it's like you base, you're, you have cards. Mm -hmm. All your moves are based on like a deck of cards that you have, but this is a first person game and it's fast paced. So you gotta like choose what cards you wanna use. And that's like the moves you make. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, it's, it's difficult to explain that, but it, it was fun. Sifu, also fantastic. Um, Stray, and tu I really like Tunic. Very, very, you know, it's, it's like, like I heard it was like, like Legend of Zelda, right? Like the original, yeah, like, the like uh, Legend of Link's Zelda. Link's Awakening. Yeah, it's a yeah. lot like Li Link's Awakening, yeah. Um, I do, I think S Sifu might win this. Really? I think, a lot yeah. I think Stray's gonna win it. It's like, uh, it's oh, like true. at the it's like at the Oscars, right? When a foreign film mm -hmm. gets nominated for both best picture and foreign best foreign film, and they don't give it to for best picture, they usually give it to for best foreign picture. It's like this consolation prize. That's true, how I, yeah. I feel like best indie game is gonna go. It's like actually, yeah. I feel like it's uh, probably Stray or Sifu, but I feel like Stray is gonna win in in that category. Yeah. Um, best but debut indie game also is pretty similar to this list, except for. Oh, um, know, Norco and Vampire Survivors is in there. Oh, People yeah. buzzing I, about dude, Vampire Survivors. I haven't played it yet. I it's on Game it, Pass. I played, dude, I love that game. I, I, I <laughs> Everybody's... love that game. Dennis, it, was, it was like the most played game, or it was like in the top 10 on Steam for months. Is it a months. twin stick shooter? Like, uh, what is the not, style? It's a, what, it's, a, it's a one stick shooter because it's like it auto aims. So you just got to oh, okay. move and avoid things. Uh, I've actually played a lot of mobile games that are like that. But they just, dude, it just got added to Game Pass recently yeah. as well. But I mean, it's, it's like a five dollar game. game. It's a five dollar game. Yeah. But like people are saying, like some people yeah. are like, dude, it's Game of the Year, you know. But it didn't I, get nominated. I, I've clocked, I've clocked in almost a, like about a hundred hours into that game. Jeez. I love that game. And it's and if you look at it, it's like it's got the graphics of like the original Castlevania game. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like very. It's like eight, like what eight bit, sixteen bit, probably. You know what I mean? Uh, I think that just because of the, like, dude, so many play. The thing is, though, like, I don't know if the people will vote for it. I just know that, that out of all these games, Vampire Survivors was played way more. People mm -hmm. have got way more hours in that game. It was, like, one of the most played games on Steam this year. Yeah. Um, people are loving it. Yeah. Yeah, I think Best Indie will probably go to Stray just because even non-gamers play that game. Yeah. But then again, will non-gamers vote on the Game Awards? That's another question, know. you know? Um but yeah, dude, I I think it's gonna I think it's Vampire Survivors. Like like Neon White was interesting and different, but not that many people played it. Mm -hmm. A lot of people played Stray. People played more Stray than Tunic. But there's dude, Vampire Survivors. More people played that than any anything on this list. Okay. I just don't know who's gonna what the votes are gonna be like. Right. But yeah, Vampire uh, Survivors is huge. Um, what are your thoughts on the best community support? Um, community support. I'm gonna tell you right now. It's like. Final Fantasy XIV ha has always had the greatest community support, mm -hmm. like hands down. Um, that and uh, No Man's Sky Hello Games also got great community support. Like Fortnite, I love Fortnite, but there's not much like community. They don't need community support. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And like, there's not much of a community because uh, like, people like I don't know. Like people, don't, uh, as far as I know, like nobody, nobody really. You don't interact with people. You just ping. You know what I mean? Um, same with Apex Legends and Destiny 2, but like Final Fantasy uh, 14 and No Man's Sky, those have got like heavy active forums as well, like very active forums, and they're huge forums. Uh, between those two, I think just because there's a much bigger player base for Final Fantasy 14, I think it'll win. Um, but in but even for me, like if I had to choose my own, I couldn't decide between No Man's Sky and Final Final Fantasy 14. Both communities are also very positive like they're mm -hmm. like the least toxic communities i've ever been a part of that's good 
And yeah. that's the you know, that's due to a large part for with community moderation and and, and mm-hmm. what's not. Um, all right, this is a category uh, that I'm very into, which is the best VR AR game. Uh, After the Fall was nominated, Among Us VR, Bone Lab, Moss Book Two, and Red Matter Two. And uh, I've played three of these. Mm-hmm. Um, After the Fall, been, Bone I've, Lab, I've played, and Red I've Matter Two. Three. Yeah. Um, and the, all three of them are good. I'd like. Uh, like in my review or not review first impressions of bone lamb it's i can see all the potential and i see why people love it it's just not for me uh red matter Mm. 2 is a follow-up to one of my favorite games red matter uh mine would probably be after the fall it's so much fun after the fall is it's basically left for dead but in vr um and just the way that they were able to get like all the different like hordes of zombies coming at you the different and they've been constantly updating it with free updates you know they're not charging for these expansions they're just giving you uh new maps and 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 new things that you can do in it so for me it would probably be after the fall um as the best vr game which three do you played among us vr and you said you've been liking it yeah it's here's the here's why here's the thing i i could see a lot of people voting for it but it is a bit glitchy at the moment like Mm. It is a bit glitchy. I'm not, I'm not going to lie. It's not the, the smoothest experience ever. It's a little glitchy. Um, I haven't played Moss Book 2. I really want to play Red Matter 2 because I, I love the first Red Matter. Yeah, yeah. I haven't played it yet. Really, really want to play that. Uh, um, I I would like After the Fall to win out of all these games. I've been loving Among Us VR because it's, it's, mm-hmm. it's a social game. You know what I mean? In social, virt- VR works so well in social aspects. You know what I mean? But After the Fall... Like it's so fun. Here's the thing as well. So not fun. much went into Among Us VR in terms of making it. I don't know why yeah. it took them so long to release it because it's like I watched before Among Us uh, when Among Us was big in 2020, mm-hmm. right? I watched a YouTuber make his own VR version of the game, and it was it was so popular. It was mm-hmm. all the big streamers were playing it as well, and this guy made it on his own in like a few weeks. Yeah. So I I don't know why Among Us VR took so long to make, but here's the thing: people way more effort and time and like like after the fall is just a better game it's a much yeah. like more like and you more play co-op that, with that you know? up to four players exactly yeah also social which is great it's so i do fun. hope after the fall wins it's just that dude people will vote for among us because of the memes once again yeah. it's like the meme vote you know what i mean um among us if you will yeah. you know <laughs> it's uh so i hope after the fall wins but uh among us might just win just because it's the meme vote it's the meme yeah. answer you know yeah um, all right, best action game. We have uh, Bayonetta 3, Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2, Neon White, Sifu, and Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Shredder's Revenge, which is the re- remake, right? Is, or, is it a yeah. remake or is it just a remaster? I can't remember. It's, I, th- I think it's like, I could be wrong, but I think it's a sequel, but exactly like the original. Oh, uh, okay. I, I could be wrong. Yeah. All right. Um, um, but, yeah, but, but it's that, what's the, the word I'm looking for? It's not isometric. It's that old school, like, 2D. Yeah, yeah, yeah 2D uh, scroller. Beat, like, scroller. Like you know, scroll scroller. Beat em up game, yeah, yeah. Mm. which used to be my favorite drawing when I was a kid, but uh, yeah. not as much anymore. I haven't played any of these, um, so what's your take? Played Sifu. Okay. And, yeah, you know, you a lot of good buzz. A lot of good buzz about Bayonetta three. Dude, Call, Call of Duty Modern Warfare two just came out, so I can't even. I'm not going to pay for it because out for some reason out here it's eighty dollars in South Africa because Steam's fixing their regional pricing, so. Somehow they were like, you know who can afford an $80 game? Africa. Africans can afford an $80 game with our booming economy. It's the dumbest thing. So I don't yeah. think I'm going to get that game for That's a while. That's why they should let Microsoft get Activision Blizzard so they can put this shit on Game Pass. Like what they it's, should it's fun, do. It's funny enough. If you buy Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 from the, the Battle.net, which is the, the Activision Blizzard hey. app, it's actually somehow like... Like not much less, but it's like like ten. No, yeah, no, it's about like ten dollars less. Mm-hmm. You know, so it's seventy dollars instead of eighty dollars. But it's still crazy, man. Yeah, they should just make a deal where Microsoft agrees to keep putting Call of Duty on PlayStation for the next, let's say, ten years, and then they can get it and just put it on Game Pass. Do you know how many yeah. more people? It's already, you know, one of the most popular games in the world. Like, do that, and you're, you're just gonna yeah. increase the popularity. They're locked in with contracts, which I get. But also, dude, it's but a first-person shooter. Are... It's, not, it's, it's not an action game. Why is it in this category? I don't know. Like, it's there's it's no, not an action game. Because there's no FPS a... category, so they stick uh, it in there. That's true, I guess. Yeah. But it's like, 
Like, action games are usually third person, or like, you know, you it's anyways. Bayonetta 3, I haven't played it yet, because um, as far as I know, yeah, it was a Switch exclusive. Um, I was exciting, I was looking forward to play that on anything else, because like, Switch yeah. is good for indie games and like cutesy games, but I don't like anything like that's supposed to be higher graphics, it doesn't run too yeah. well or fast yeah. paced. Um, yeah, so I think because of the scandal around Bayonetta 3, more people ended up playing it than what it would have had. Mm -hmm. um, Neon White, out of all of these, well, okay, Sifu and Neon White, those are both like really good action games. Uh, mm -hmm. Neon White is, I really enjoyed Neon White, it came out of nowhere for me as well. Um, it's very, um, it's one of those things where like, it's it's intense. That's the word I'm looking for. It's intense. Like you kind of like you're in it. You know what I mean? But Sifu, I would say, is a better action by far. And I think Sifu is going to win this category. Mm. All right. Yeah. Let's move on to best action adventure game, which is mm. it combines combat with this is the definition with traversal and puzzle solving. So it's not purely yeah. just action. Um, a Plague Tale Requiem, which I love, it's on there. God of War Ragnarok, which I love, it's on there. Horizon Forbidden West, I haven't played yet. Stray and Tunic. Um, uh, this is gonna be. This is a difficult one again. You know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, my, I'm thinking it's gonna be God of War Ragnarok, um, especially if you know if we see Elden Ring win um, best or game of the year. You know, yeah. I feel like God, God of War won best action adventure. Yeah. Stray was a great adventure game. There's zero action, mm -hmm. but it was a great adventure game. Uh, Tunic, that is a good action. Well, yeah, that is a good ad, like action adventure game. Well, mm -hmm. I mean, technically there's action in it. It's Legend of Zelda, basically. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, I think God of War Ragnarok's going to win as well, just based off of votes. Yeah. I, dude, I literally can't choose between the top three. I can't choose between a Plague Tale Requiem. God of War Ragnarok or Horizon Forbidden West. I, I, I could not choose between mm -hmm. the, three, the three of those for this category. I'm, I'm really interested to see who's going to win. Most likely God of War, just yeah. because it's a lot more popular. Well, all right, best RPG. This is where Elden Ring is, and I think it's going to win Hands this. Down. It's, yeah. uh, they have uh, Live a Live. I don't even yeah. know if I've ever heard of that. Uh, Pokemon Legends Arceus. Triangle Strategy, I haven't heard of that. Xenoblade Chronicles 3 again. Uh hmm. I think it's going to be Elden Ring. I mean, when you talk about like when they're talking about character customization, weapons, progression, um, yeah, for me, Elden Ring is that's where it shines. Didn't shine on the narrative, uh, but RPG elements, fantastic. The, the in terms of RPG mechanics, hands down, it wins. It's it's one of the it's well, it's the best RPG we've had this year by far. Uh, like Pokemon Legends Ar Ar Arceus, I I love that game. Hmm very very little rpg mechanics you know what i mean it's a very bare bones that's pokemon's always been like a very bare bones rpg kind of game yeah. triangle strategy um also a very good game but like not much rpg like it's got the role playing but it doesn't have the role play the traditional role playing mechanics that we know of it doesn't have that you know what i mean xenoblade blade chronicles 3 is i haven't played it yet but the previous two games were fantastic rpgs well jrpgs more specifically but it's just Elden Ring had way more players, much bigger player base. It's gonna win. It's not like I don't think anybody else is gonna get even close. Mm -hmm. Like the second, yeah. the second most voted game would probably be Xenoblade Chronicles yeah. Three. But Elden Ring's gonna. It's a sweep. They're gonna sweep this one out. Yeah. Uh, best fighting game. Uh, DNF Duel, JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, All Star Battle R, The King of Fighters Fifteen, Multiverses, and Sifu. Um, mm. I mean, Sifu's getting nominated in quite a few categories here. Correct, yeah. And and it did, you know, a lot of people were... The funny thing about Sifu is, like, either people loved it or they hated it because it was because of the way the game the design was. Yeah. Well. You yeah. had to keep going. Like, basically, you had just had to get better. That was it. Like, it was like, get, get better. <laughs> yeah. It, it's different than, um, for example, Alden Ring. Elden Ring, even though you did have to sink a lot of hours into it, you could progress your way so you become so powerful you could beat any enemy, yeah. you know? There's nothing like that in Sifu. It's like you just have to get better. <laughs> you, just, you just gotta play over and over again until you yeah. get good at the game, man. Because of the Which way I love those kind of games. Yeah, because it locks you into like how far you get and how many times you die. So it doesn't really matter, you know. You just have to yeah. get better. Um, what do you, who you think wins thing. this? Because uh, best fighting, first of all, it's like what's going to get the most votes as well. 
um, and best fighting, you would assume it's usually multiplayer. You know what I mean? Sifu is not multiplayer. Yeah. It's a great action game. And it technically is a fighting game because it's literally martial arts. You know what I mean? Um, so out of all of these, that's the best game. Out of, mm -hmm. uh, they're, it's the best game, but I don't know what their people are going to vote for the most. I enjoyed Multiverses, you know, not mm -hmm. that bad, um, especially because they've done a lot of um, balancing. They've had a lot of game balance since the game came out. You know what I mean? I think mm -hmm. for a while they had to remove, they had to remove um, LeBron James and um, forgot the other character. But I'm sure that they're doing some balancing issues. They've done some balancing issues mm -hmm. there. JoJo's Bizarre Adventure m might get a lot of votes based off of, once again, it's the meme answer. It's the meme vote. I love JoJo's Bizarre Adventure as an anime. I haven't played the, the game. Mm -hmm. um, but once, like, between Multiverses and Sifu, those are, like, I'd say the most played. Um, don't know which one's going to win, you know what I mean? I, I would like Sifu to win this. Because in terms yeah, of, like, I like the, the, I like the genre is fighting. And you f like Sifu's great fighting, you know? Yeah, I, I like the love that Sifu's getting in in, in all these categories. Same. Yeah. All right, uh, best multiplayer game. Uh, we got Call of Duty, Modern Warfare 2, Multiverses, yeah. Overwatch 2, Splatoon 3, and again, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Shredder's Revenge, which it seems to have gotten a lot of uh, acclaim there. Yeah. I'm very surprised. Uh, just to say, we, we, we did skip a few categories here, but that's because we're a bit low on time and we haven't yeah. played much of those games. Yeah. So, yeah, best multiplayer. Dude, Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 just came out. Like, it just came out. You know what I mean? As, as far as I know, like, it came out a few days ago. Let me let me check. Let me double check. A couple check weeks ago. Least from that. It was like a couple weeks ago. Yeah. But, yeah. Uh, Multiverses, which is free to play. Overwatch 2. Splatoon 3. Okay, yeah. Okay, so it did come out about, like, half a month ago, to be fair. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I haven't played it yet just because it costs so much money out here. Uh, I, I, yeah. I, I could not afford that game. Well, I just... It's it's not worth $80 for me at the moment. Um, $80? Jesus. Yeah, I know. $80. For the base game, $80. Yeah. And yeah. remember, these are being delivered digitally now. These are not mm -hmm. discs. It's not like... Back in the day, one of the reasons games cost so much was the cartridges because like, it was actual like microchips in the cartridges. And then with CDs and DVDs, it, it was, you know, a cheaper medium. Um, mm. uh, but now it's like digital. It's like, you know, it's all, it's, there's nothing physical. There's no shipping. There's no manufacturing. Yeah. It's all just the, the, the studio, you know, uh, development. Yeah. Well, cost. Steam recent, recently changed its, um, what's it called? The, uh, I just said the word earlier on the regional pricing mm -hmm. because a lot of people were changing their regions and stuff to like get, get through to get the cheaper games and stuff. So I'm hoping they change it again because it's dude, dude, we South Africans, like we, or just like Africa in general, like we don't, our economy isn't booming. Like we, like the previous pricing I say was fair. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yes, it was cheaper than American games, but considering how much our minimum wages and stuff like that, yeah. it was a fair price. Like getting us to play, like people are laughing at the steam prices because they're just like we're just not going to be gaming for a while yeah, yeah. you know or at least we're not going to be buying games from steam so. uh, but going back to best multiplayer here uh teenage mutant mutant ninja turtles has couch co-op couch co-op is fun mm -hmm. real fun but if we're looking at like um the fan base overwatch 2 also had to have some balancing issues i played overwatch 2 i really enjoyed it it got um, some backlash though not so much it that it was bad but so much that it wasn't that different they were like, it's like yeah. Overwatch 1.5. Oh, it went free to play, yeah. So, yeah, because here's the thing. Overwatch 2, the whole point of Overwatch 2 is that they were supposed to add PvE. PvE hasn't come out yet. So it literally is Overwatch 1, except I think you used to have two tanks. Now you only have one tank. Yeah. Um, there was a lot of balancing issues in the beginning. A lot of characters were OP. Some yeah. some characters were just permanently removed. Well, one character was permanently re re removed, May. Splatoon 3 had a, a big... Uh, <laughs> Not travesty. I'm blanking on words today, man. It had a big uh, controversy Versi. this year where a lot of Splatoon 3 um, streamers and players would use... Because you're spraying uh, paint everywhere, and that's how you mm -hmm. win. Who's got the most paint, right? People were chroma keying that and playing porn in the background. Um, which And so many people got banned. Like, what did they think they were going to do? They were on YouTube. So many accounts got banned. Uh, but anyway, Splatoon 3, great multiplayer game. Much smaller fan base. Um... Overwatch 2, there was a lot of... I don't th I don't think people are going to vote for it because a lot of people are upset with the game. Yeah. Um, it did get a much bigger player base because it's free to play. Mm -hmm. um, I believe Multiverses is also free to play. I could be wrong about that. 
Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 hasn't been out for long enough. Uh, I think it might be between multiverses and... Well, not a lot of people play the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles game, but that mm -hmm. is a good multiplayer game. It's couch co-op. I think... I don't know, man. I think multiverses might win this one. Nice. All right, best e Overwatch too. best esports yeah. game: Counter Strike Global Offensive, uh, Dota Two, League of Legends. Ooh, don't you want to do? Don't you want to do best adaptation real quick? Uh, we that's talk, a, I, we have that, I have that. I have that. I have that at the end. Okay, cool. Okay, so best esports game. Yeah, uh, League of Legends, Rocket League, and Valorant. Your favorite? Yeah. Look, I mean, yeah, Valorant is my favorite. Out of all these games. Um, not much changes have been made except for Valorant. Every Valorant has every season it adds a new agent, right? Mm -hmm. Dota 2 hasn't changed in a long time. I love Dota 2. I play a mm -hmm. lot of Dota 2. Um, not against real people because I, I'm it's a it's a difficult game. Dota 2, people can fight me on this, but Dota 2 is a lot more difficult than League of Legends, even though they're both MOBAs. Mm -hmm. League of Legends is a lot more accessible. You know, it's it's easier to get into. It's it it is a little bit easier than Dota 2. Dota 2 is a lot more try hard. Uh, count, I, I, Counter Strike is a great game. It's been around forever. Not much changes have happened there either. Uh, like its its counterpart would be Valorant. They're basically the same game. I like Valorant because it's more colorful. In Counter Strike, I've had people who like I'm colorblind, and I have people who aren't colorblind who tell me they don't know if they're shooting the wall or if they're shooting a person, because <laughs> everything's like very much like people are in camo. Similar and the walls color. Are, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it, it, things too look too similar there. Um, but in terms of like, I would love Valorant to win here, but the player base behind League of Legends is huge. So I do think League of Legends is going to win this because it just has the bigger player base. Also play a lot of Rocket League. I enjoy Rocket League, but um, I do think League of Legends is going to win this one. Yeah. Wish it was Valorant, though. Yeah. All right, this next one, most anticipated game. Now, this is a category, to me, is kind of pointless. Um, I'll list mm. off the, the, the nominees. So you have Final Fantasy 16, Hogwarts Legacy, Resident Evil 4, Starfield, The Legend of Zelda, Tears of the Kingdom. I mean, on this list, I'm most anticipating Starfield with probably Hogwarts Legacy right behind that. Uh, and then what are yours? And then we'll talk about the category in general. Um, it's between Final Fantasy 16 and Hogwarts Legacy for me. Okay. I'm looking forward to Starfield, but I'm a diehard Final Fantasy fan. And this new game looks really good, man. Yeah. Okay, so let's talk about the category. I feel like it's kind of pointless and useless, other than w maybe there's a lot, <laughs> a lot of like advertisers or the companies that are like want this category in there so they can help promote their, you know, their game. Like, oh, Hogwarts Legacy was sense. the most, the winner of the most anticipated game of the Game Awards or whatever. To me, it's pointless because you're 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 talking about anticipation there's a lot of anticipation for a lot of things games movies tv shows that doesn't mean they're good you know what i mean also, all yeah. the rest of the categories are based on something right that something is out there for people to play or or whatever to judge this is purely on like oh this is the one that you like the most remember cyberpunk uh, 2077 was like coming out every freaking year and like kept showing yeah. up in this category it's like I don't know. I just personally, other than if it's... Anticipation changes, man. Yeah. Like anticipation, that's the thing. Anticipation changes. The Games could get delayed again, and then you're like, you have less anticipation. It's a very vague kind of thing. And I think you're absolutely right. This whole, the, the category exists for marketing. Yeah. I think you're absolutely right. It's just marketing. You know what I mean? And Like just listing the games already is free marketing. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> yeah like Hogwarts Legacy was, remember, it was originally supposed to come out this year. And then, yeah, and Must they, they pushed this, it. Well, I think this month or next month. Yeah, yeah, I think it was November or something like that. They pushed it. Uh, Starfield too. Starfield was supposed to come out this year as well. Yep. So, anyways, uh, I, I I don't see the category is is doing much use other than advertising. All right, this one you had just mentioned before, and this is our last category, but it's a very interesting one. It's a new one, right? They just added this um, yeah. this year, and it's best adaptation, and it's something you and me always talk about, which is. Mm -hmm. video games being adapted to other mediums, which is television, movies, comic books, or what, whatever. Uh, I'll, I'll list off the adaptations, and then we'll talk about them. Uh, Arcane League of Legends, Cyberpunk uh, Edge Runners, The Cuphead Show, Sonic the Hedgehog 2, and Uncharted. Uh, what I notice about this category is it's a pretty solid list uh, mm -hmm. compared to what video games used to be doing. Maybe that's why they added it this year. It's like, Wow, you actually have 
stuff now that people can genuinely be excited about or talk about versus usually before video game adaptations were like, oh man, that sucked, that sucked, that sucked or whatever. Where most of these are like either at least okay or actually pretty good. Uh, I mean, yeah, my winner... Left, like they, ha they had more to choose from. Like there was even... There's a couple that weren't listed here because they obviously didn't want to, but that's how many how many adaptations they had to choose from. Their pool yeah. was so big they had to make it a they had to make it a category, you know. Yeah, great. Uh, so my winner would be Arcane League of Legends. I think it's a a, a, a fantastic show. Um, and I don't even play the game. I played the game like a few times. Um, uh, I thought Sonic the Hedgehog two was pretty good too, but it wasn't mm -hmm. arcane level. So for me, it would be arcane. Yeah. Uncharted was okay. I didn't love it or hate it. It was just okay for me. But Arcane to me is is the is the winner. What about you? I'd I'd have to agree with you. Arcane is the clear winner. Also, it's the it's it's I loved Cyberpunk Edge Runners. Loved it. I need I need to watch but, that. Uh, I I really enjoyed it. It dude, it it tugged on my heartstrings. The ending got the ending the ending got me crying. It was a really good really good anime because that's mm -hmm. what it is. It's a really good anime. But in terms of adaptation, they just adapted Night City. Mm. Like, all the characters are fresh. Whereas Arcane, that's actual characters from the game. Yeah. Getting, like, backstory and stuff, which we've always had backstory, but we've never had. And League of Legends has always had the coolest animations whenever they got a new person to play as. So we knew it was going to be good. It's just Arcane is a flawless, it's a masterpiece of a show. The Cuphead show, I hated it. I love Cuphead. I didn't, I didn't I hated watch it. The I hated the Cuphead show. I found it annoying. Sonic the Hedgehog 2, I enjoyed, but mm. it was not as good as the original, uh, the mm. first Sonic the Hedgehog movie, mm. which was much better. But that's what you get with sequels usually a lot of the time. I did enjoy it. And I feel the same about Uncharted. I enjoyed Uncharted, but I wasn't loving it. I was. Mm. It was something to watch, yeah. you know? <laughs> it, was, it was fine but for I think what Ar it was. Ar Arcane's going to win hands down. It's also got yeah. the biggest fan base. And remember, next year, you're going to have um, The Last of Us, the HBO mm. series, I don't know what the target date is for Fallout. I don't know if it's at the end of next year or not, but that's yeah. another uh, one. Then you're going to have Arcane probably season two in there. Um, so you got a lot of cool things. What movies are also being worked on? I'm trying to think. Oh, we talked about, I don't know when this will come out, but the Gears of War Netflix movie, which I don't think we'll probably make next year. We're probably looking uh, dude, at 2024. That's probably like pre-production. Pre yeah, you know yeah. I mean? that's probably 2024. Um but yeah, um, this is uh, I welcome this edition, uh, this category, and uh, I, I think it's going to kind of grow uh, from there. Um, all right, I think that's all the the ones that we covered, uh, or we we were planning on covering. We just you know it's a, almost an hour now. Uh, any last thoughts about uh, the Game Awards, which is not too um, far away? It's a, about three weeks away. I mean, I'm I'm looking forward to all the trailers. That's always oh, been yeah. my favorite part. You know what I mean? They're gonna be. Uh, he, Jeff Kelly did say that he's got some trailers. He's got some announcements. That for me is oh, like okay, game of the year, uh, December eighth. Sorry, direction. I made a I made a mistake. Like, December eighth, not fifth. Yeah, the 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 top three categories. I'm always excited to see. You know what I mean? There's a couple things that I'm like less excited about. Like I'm not too bothered about content creator of the year. Uh, usually I care about best esport player, but for some reason I only know one of the people nominated. And I'm usually clued up with esports. Uh, I guess I was a little out of the loop this year. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I'm mostly excited for the announcements, man. Trailers, announcements. I'm excited. I'm excited for the event, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, all right. I guess that's it. Uh, make sure we're, we'll probably have a, a podcast uh, later this week. Um, and we'll, we'll briefly kind of go over this stuff and then some more uh, other, other news coming out as well. Uh, make sure to subscribe to this YouTube channel, youtube.com slash revog. We have a Spotify, anchor.fm for the weekly podcast. I'll probably put this on the podcast as well, just because it's a longer form, you know, that, that, that we did talk quite a bit uh, about this subject. You can find me on Twitter at ThinkHero, Instagram, Dennis.TZNG. Uh, where can people find you? You guys can find me in the Revog Discord channel. We're trying to get that uh, community a lot more active. I'm always yeah. out there. About it. You guys want to talk? um talk about any kind of games i'm there i'm there i'm there to talk you guys can also follow me on um oh my cam disappeared for yeah, a second. Yeah, yeah, sorry. <laughs> yeah. yeah you guys can also follow me on twitch at it's thespis or lowercase there's hopefully a description uh, link in the description below once i get to 100 followers i'll be streaming actively cool 
or until next time or maybe later this week we'll we'll talk to you guys yeah. later later <laughs>